this thing on? Okay. Let's all turn in our Bibles tonight to uh, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I'm going to pick out one verse out of there and I'm going to launch. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Uh, um, now, if this is a review to you, uh, just bear my senility uh, for a little short, uh, humor me for a short while, but this is what I feel that the Lord would have us to cover tonight. Um, we come in a lot of scriptures, but you don't have to turn to them. I'll cover them pretty much. But Psalm 119, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, once again for this time that we can come together, the freedom that we have to come and worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're a gracious God and that uh, uh, you're just, you've just been so kind to us more than we'll ever deserve. I pray, Lord, you be with our pastor who's away, Lord. Use them mightily even now and uh, be with the Easler family, Lord, as we mention them again, and Brother J.D. and Sister Denise, Lord. Watch over them, Clint and Sarah and Sandra, Lord. And we just watch over them. But be with us now, Lord, as we try to learn something for thy word. Help me to say those things which would be pleasing in thy sight and that we could learn from. Lord, we do give you the be careful to give you all the praise and glory that you deserve. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The top of my little short study tonight would be um, it would be on liberty. I know that's a word that's flashed around in a lot of churches. You know, we, in fact, that's their uh, calling card is liberty. You know, we want we'll give you liberty. I remember a relative of my in my family who claimed to be saved years ago. She told me, I don't ever want to go to a Baptist church again, you know, a Bible-thumping Baptist church again. Because, uh, you know, most people, I don't know what you come to church for. I hope you come for the right reason. Uh, you come to hear the Word of God expounded. But they, they, they're, they're, you know, a lot of churches, uh, these big modern churches, they, they preach liberty, liberty. You got liberty here. And uh, the Bible says in uh, Psalm 119, verse 45, here the, uh, David wrote, he says, I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Now, before get, we get into uh, the word liberty is the most abused word in Christian vocabulary. Liberty means basically to be free from restraint. Be free from restraint. And to many, it means freedom to do whatever you want to do. But we know if you've been saved for any length of time, we don't get to do everything we want to do. Um, <clears throat> because we're not under the law, but uh, uh, we don't have that attitude. But I want to go a little bit deeper on this uh, liberty thing. Are you really walking at liberty like you should? You know, when I think of liberty, I think of, parents setting restraints on their little children. Did you realize, I know contrary to popular psychology today and modern psychology, that children actually do thrive under restraints. They, they thrive under barriers. Now, you don't realize that are a barrier until you turn teen, you know. You know, when you turn teen, I was told that when you turn 13, you go in your bedroom and you unscrew the top of your head and you pick your brain out and hide it someplace. And then when you turn 21, oh, you suddenly discover that your parents were not as stupid as you thought they were. And you put it back in and you screw it back on. But you know, uh, children thrive under restraint. Why do you, they, would you think that? Because they know how far they can go either way. And you know what, when you know that there is a boundary on either side, you have, there's a certain kind of liberty. So I can, I can act up in these parameters and not get in myself into trouble. Today, in today's society, uh, oh, the parents want to be buddies to their little children and they end up being maniacs by the time they turn into teens. That ought not so. But when I ask this question, are you really walking at liberty? One of the, the biggest hindrances to walking at liberty, and I'll say this, is 
just the, let's get down to the brass tacks, just, be, just learning to trust and walk with God. We've been so filled full of a lot of churches, you know, well, you can't do this and you can't do that. And, you know, people, when they look at, you can imagine that if you spent time in my uh, <clears throat> tabernacle Bible study, uh, a study on the tabernacle, on, if you looked at the tabernacle, the actual tent, you would see it was kind of drab looking. Nothing really to look at. But as soon as you got inside... It was beautiful and gold and everything. And you know, and that's what a lot of outsiders, when they see Christians, they see something drab, but they don't really see what's going on inside. And you see, a lot of Christians themselves, they limit themselves because, face it, our whole life is learning how to walk with God, isn't it not? And when we fail to walk with God, it's usually because of mistrust. Every issue in your life, whether you like to believe it or not, is because you just, we, including myself, we find it hard to trust God at his word. And God says, look, if you just follow me, you'll, you'll just be as free, as free as you can be and happy. God created us don't you think he knows how best to take care of us? And that's why he gave these laws. He gave these laws, and we'll get into them. Uh, what is liberty? <clears throat> is that, well, first of all, to dispel that, that accusation that the Christian church has from the outside, or those who, you know, like they say, you Baptists, you believe once saved, always saved. So I guess you, you, you have this attitude where I can do what anything I want to do and the Lord will forgive me and all this stuff. No, if you're really saved, you don't have that attitude. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Verse 1, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us was, were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him in, by baptism unto death, that like as Christ has raised up from the dead by the glory of God, even so we also should walk in newness of life. You see, we were under the law, we were uh, in Galatians, what, we were under the law and we were in, uh, under condemnation. What is liberty? Galatians chapter 2 gives us a, a hint. Galatians chapter 2, you come there. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2, and we'll be going to chapter 7, uh, Galatians, I mean Romans chapter 7. Here Paul is writing to the Galatians, and he says right here, uh, that verse 1, Galatians chapter 2, verse 1, Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communication with them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, by which, uh, <clears throat> but privately to them that were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us again into bondage. Have you ever noticed that there's only, there's only two religions in the world when you break it right down? One religion says you got to do this, 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 and you just might make it. And the other religion says it is done. It is done, and you have assurance. You see what... Uh, even in Christian circles, you get these people that get into churches and they want to micromanage the congregation. So they come up with all these laws and rules and regulations. And what are they doing? They're guilty of the very thing that Colossians was written for, taste not, handle not, and all this. And they get people because they feel that they want to control the people. Well, that's not really liberty, is it? You know what God wants? He wants you to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. You know, 
uh, <clears throat> when you when you fall in love with somebody, you don't care what they require of you. You just want to get it done. You want it, and there's liberty in that. And you're just as happy. You know, you're just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, just like a little puppy. You just want, you just want, you know, you're just, your tongue is just flapping every which way, you know, and you're just, you're, you know, you don't care what they, what they tell you, what they require of you. Um, but, you know, it's the same way like your Christian life. You, when you realize that you've been saved, that you don't have to fear death anymore, he could tell you to do anything you want. But over time, the old flesh creeps in and the liberty starts going out the window because you're thinking that now, and I don't want you to take this wrong, uh, that your performance... Uh, makes you any better in the standing of God. No, God saved you the way you were. He didn't want you to remain that way, but he knew what kind of Christian you would be. I mean, if you truly got saved, you see, when you're, when you're a Christian, you're not trusting in your good works at all. You're trusting in the merits of Jesus Christ and him alone. It says right here, what is it? It... It was, uh, it was not bondage under the Old Testament law and its requirements. In Galatians chapter 3, what was the law? In verse 21, Galatians chapter 3, <clears throat> it says, uh, let me see, uh, Galatians, uh, let me see, it's not 3, but 2. Let me see, let me get there. <clears throat> oh, verse, verse 24. Uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith you know what the law was added it was not added so that you could do it and work your way to heaven no the law was shown to show you how wicked you really are and how sinful you are when in comparison to an almighty God who is righteous and holy and is of too pure of eyes to behold iniquity. You know, you could go to, and it's dangerous too, because if you could, I know some people and, and that went to church for years and years and years. They'd go to church, but they were never saved. They thought by going to church and reading their Bibles and just being a good citizen and all this, they, they were trusting in themselves. They never learned to trust Jesus Christ in him alone. You know, when you come to the point, uh, that's why that, uh, the, the law was given so you could see how hopeless it was to try and keep it. How many, how many of you kept the law 100% since you've been saved? <laughs> How many of you have never sinned since you've been saved? Like the old saying goes, if you admit that, let me put a camera on you and I'll watch you 24 hours a day, you know? Or better yet, I'll just ask your wife and she'll tell you. <laughs> she'll tell me. <laughs> or ask your husband. Um, what is it? Liberty is not the absence. It, it is not. The, liberty is you don't have to. You are not under the law anymore. There's no way you can make it. Uh, there's no way you can earn it. Uh, you become dead to the law, according to Romans chapter 7. You become dead to the law by the body of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 7, it says right here, Romans chapter 7, <clears throat> verse 4, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Where, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to the bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from that law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should, that we should serve uh, in newness of spirit, and not in oldness of the letter. See what God did? He put, he took all your sins and placed them on his son. And he died for you on the cross of Calvary. And now you, you, you can no longer be 
uh, charged as a sinner in God's eyes. I know that's hard to fathom. But you know, uh, you know, you look at somebody like my, like Matt here. You know, you'd say, "Yeah, that's a sinner. That's a sin. <laughs> oh man, he's a sinner." <laughs> when God's, but God looks down on him and says, "That's my son. I see Jesus Christ in him. What are you talking about? His sin." In God's eyes, in God's viewpoint, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, He no longer sees you as a sinner. He sees you as his son or his daughter. He sees Jesus Christ in you. Just think of the liberty that is. You look at these people who are in a religion and they're just worried. Have I done enough? Have I done enough? Have I done enough? You got, uh, um, if you remember this uh, woman from, she was a nun in the Catholic church. She worked 68 years, devoted her life to the Catholic Church. Her name was Mother Teresa. And she didn't know where she was going when she, was, when she died. Isn't that tragic? You know why? Because she was trusting in her abilities to get things done. You're foolish if you're trusting in yourself. In Galatians chapter 5, we read over here, Paul said this, brethren, if any, uh, he says, stand fast, therefore, verse five, Galatians chapter five, verse one, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What had happened to the Galatian church is they got saved, but then they had some Judaizers come in and said, unless you be circumcised and all this and, uh, and do the work, uh, uh, the Old Testament, you cannot be saved. And that's, that question was settled in Acts chapter 15 if you care to read about it but God had settled that no man has ever been saved by keeping the law what a great liberty that is but you know what why we work now it says right here uh, for I testify verse 3 to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law that's why I can't understand the seven day Adventist church they're trying to keep the law, but they say they're saved by grace through faith. Yet they don't have any assurance. You cannot mix it. You know, you, and that's another thing. When your performance, when you're basing your salvation on your performance, you have not really come into liberty. You know, the thing we got to get it, uh, through is, is our our standing with Jesus Christ is not dependent on what we do. It is what he did. Our state is another thing. How is your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ? How is your fellowship with one another? You know, you can have all the standing in Jesus Christ you want, but you could be at odds with the Lord. Do you believe that? You could be at odds with your brother and sister in Christ. It's, he says right here, for we through, uh, Galatians chapter 5, <clears throat> For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. You see where we're coming with this liberty thing? The only way you're going to really experience liberty on a daily basis between you and the Lord is when you realize that God has your best interest at heart and what he tells you is for your good. And once you realize that he really loves you, you only naturally want to love him that much more in return and where there is, and he says with faith which worketh by love. We love him because he first loved us. And so everything we do should be out of love for him, not for ourselves, not to make our... <laughs> we can't make ourselves more righteous than we are. But we can make ourselves more useful than we are right now. 
You know, there's some brethren that are going to stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ, and the only righteousness they'll have is Christ's righteousness. That's a great thing. But they won't have anything else. They won't have any rewards. They won't have any, uh, anything to show for it because they basically live for self. Oh, they got saved. But their life, they just decided at this point, this is how far I'm going to go, Lord. You know, I hope you like what I'm giving you. And they don't go on any further. And so they're constantly walking around like they're not in liberty. You know, liberty is when you finally decide, Lord, I made a mess of my life and here I am. I can't do any better. I want you to run my life. Until you come to that point, you're never going to really be happy and feel liberty. You know, this liberty that the, the outside in these carnal churches, they see, oh, yeah, you know, you've got a bunch of do's and don'ts. No, it's not like that at all. Faith which worketh by love. Liberty is the freedom to do what you ought to do. See, before uh, you were in religion, God never accepted anything you did. Because everything was tainted and everything, was, there was no relationship. And as far as he was concerned, you were dead and on your way to hell. But one day you trusted him as your savior and now he's going to accept everything you do for him. Uh, if it's done with the right attitude out of love for Jesus Christ. And that's another thing. If you're doing something to be seen of men, if you're doing something because if you don't do it, somebody's going to say something bad about you and all that, you're not going to get any reward for that. You should ask yourself, Lord, have I ever done anything for you just because you deserve it? Just because... Not because I want to get anything out of it, but I just want to do something for you. You know, God is just like you and I sometimes. What, what kind of child relationship would you have with someone who's constantly fighting you all the time? And you just seem like a struggle just to get them to do something. But what if something happened? Your boy woke up and he comes, comes to your, uh, you know, your daughter comes to you and uh, mommy, I... I uh, got up and I decided that your way is the best way and I cleaned up my room. And I put all my toys away. Well, after you, drop, after you picked yourself off, off the floor from fainting, <laughs> wouldn't it be that much easier to love on that child? You know, all that's all that God, that God wants is uh, how's, how's your love life with the Lord? It's freedom. Uh, liberty is a freedom to do what you ought and not what you want. It says right here in Galatians chapter 5, he says, uh, uh, verse 13, For brethren, you've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for the occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Isn't that what the key is? It's the freedom that, that the saint enjoys. Liberty is the freedom that the saint enjoys from the pardon of sin that he can now serve God in love and not fear. In John, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Always... First John chapter 4. It says right here, First John chapter 4. <clears throat> it says, uh, verse 16, And we know and believe the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not per made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar for whose... 
For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God in whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. We don't have to fear. See, what the problem is, the devil starts saying, oh, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. Well, we have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus Christ the righteous. He's taking care of that. Well, what if I fail, Lord? I've taken care of that. I just want you to be real with me. You know, the problem is a lot of times why we don't really experience the liberty that we ought because we're not real with God. We say we, when we go to him in prayer, uh, we're hiding things. Or we're not really hitting them. We're not really telling them the truth. You know, God wants to hear the truth from us. He wants that close fellowship. You know, if you, you're, you're, if you if you're a married uh, couple here, and it there and uh, of course I wouldn't assume this, but you know if you ever had a disagreement with your wife or your spouse, uh, if that ever happens, the only way you get settled is uh, uh, when that communication is broken is you. Both learn how to say, I'm sorry. And then when you do that, in the case of the Lord, it's usually us, it's always us saying, I'm sorry. God, he just kind of, he doesn't overlook it. He forgives it and he says, let's go on. Okay, you messed up. Let's go on. I've forgotten it. I've forgotten it. You know, uh, you know why they hated Paul, the Apostle Paul when he'd preach stuff like this uh, is because they didn't have the liberty that he experienced. They didn't have the joy that he had. They didn't have that peace that passeth understanding. That is liberty. Liberty is being able to do what you ought to do because it is right. Because it's done out of a pure heart and it's also because you know that you've been forgiven and that the Lord sees you as one of his own. What it's not is uh, verse 13, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. It says right here, For brethren, you've been called under liberty. Only use not liberty for the occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. We don't have a license to do whatever we want to do. And if you really love somebody, you know, you don't want to hurt them. If you live, if you really love God, you don't want to hurt them. You know, you know the reason why I don't cheat on my wife? Because I love her. And the minute I break that bond of trust that she has, it'd be very hard to get back. And uh, I don't have someone saying, you know, like to promise keepers, promise me, you know, holding another man's hand in a stadium saying, I promise you that I'll be faithful to my wife. Hogwash. If you got to do that in a stadium, you got some deep problems that you need to deal with between you and the Lord. I mean, really, you know, does it come to that? You know, uh, if you really love the Lord, you care about the way he thinks about you. It, we don't have the right. It's not a license to uh, just do whatever we want to do. Uh, it's not in Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 13, uh, liberty is not, especially for the Christian, is this. It says right here, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, he's talking about government, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that risk shall receive to themselves damnation. That doesn't mean you're going to lose your salvation, but you're going to get whatever the law hands out. Now, if you're, if you're speeding, don't cry and say, well, they're persecuting me. <laughs> you know? Uh, no, what did the sign say? 
It said 65 out there. Then why are you doing 75? Well, that would just condemn all of Winston-Salem. <laughs> Especially during the hours of 7 to 9 o'clock in the morning and 3 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you know? Uh, I, I figured out one thing. The speed limits there are purely or ornamentation. They have no... They have no basis, in fact, for anyone on the streets, you know? And it's just like getting on a roller coaster. You just have to keep up with the flow or get killed. Uh, <coughs> you're, you're supposed, we're, you know, seriously, we as Christians, for testimony's sake, we're supposed to obey the laws. Uh, even uh, the Apostle Peter told them that we're to obey the government. The, and who was the government at the time? It was Rome. It was Rome. You know, we don't believe in these free men. You know, I call them free-range Christians. You know, like free-range chickens. You know, <laughs> we're to obey the laws. You know, we don't just do everything. Uh, you know, we're, we don't have this attitude that, you know, you don't have rule over me. Well, if you're doing what's right... I remember I got into a, an argument with one of my relatives, and I won't. It was years ago when they first started uh, at work in all the corporations because of the drug problem and all that. They were starting to bring about what they call a urine, urine test. And all the employees had to take a urine test. Uh, some that didn't study failed it, you know. <laughs> no, that's a joke. <laughs> You know, but actually, some of them. <laughs> this one relative of mine was adamant. I'm never. That's why I'm self-employed. I'm never gonna have them take have me uh, take that test. And I said, Why are you getting so upset? If you know, it's like this. If you're not doing anything wrong, and you're not doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, then why sweat it? You know. Well, it's just a, it's a breach of, the, you know, it's a, my constitutional right. Well, hey, yeah, you, if you want your job, play around, play, if you're not fooling with the funny stuff, just go ahead and do it, you know, get it over with, you know, but, you know, they were adamant about that, you know, some people don't want to be ruled about anything. You know, we're, we don't take those type of liberties. We're supposed to be we're supposed to represent the Lord Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. We're not supposed to be lawless, as Paul said. I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things you can do to, when you're to disobey, okay? When the Lord, when an ex, uh, when, when they tell you, you cannot pray. What did Daniel say when they told Daniel? You can't pray to any God but the God that we specify. He says, okay, I'll go and pray about it. <laughs> you know, when they tell you you cannot preach anymore, well, you're just going to have to preach. When they tell you you can't read your Bible anymore, you're just going to have to do some more reading. That's when, you're the, when they tell you to worship idols, you cannot do that. And, when they, and yet, whatever goes against conscience sake, conscience sake, you know, all of us, you know, like the thing of drinking, uh, there's not a scripture in the Bible that says, thou shalt not drink. In fact, Paul and all, every drunkard knows this, recommended, uh, you know, alcohol, you know, wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. And then all the drunks like to use that verse. But it doesn't mean that means recommended for medicine. But there's over 300 verses against it that it's a wrong thing to do. And if you be bidden to do it, I don't care where you are. If they tell you and your conscience is bothered by it, don't do it. You're not. You know, if you lose friends... If you're any kind of Christian, don't worry, you're going to lose lost friends anyway. They don't want to hang around you, you know. Uh, then you can disobey them. Uh, the only time Paul used his rights as a Roman citizen was only one thing, was not to get 
uh, better parking arrangements. It was not to get, you know, some right that he felt that he, to, to uh, not pay your taxes or to steal from your job. You don't have that, or to disobey every law that you disagree with. You know what? The only time he would enjoin the authorities is when he saw that his rights were being taken away for the strict purpose of preventing him from preaching the gospel. I said, you know, I don't know how bad this is going to get. But we may be facing a time uh, where we might have to suffer for our faith. Where they might make it the laws where you can't, uh, unless you have your social credit score up to snuff, that uh, you can't draw from your bank and all that. Uh, they, they'll find a way. They'll, they'll figure out a way. What do you do? You, you uh, go home and blow your brains out? No. God says this is going to happen. He says in Philippians, <clears throat> this one verse right here, it says right here in verse 29, Philippians chapter 1, 29, or, well, 28. It says, uh, we're 27. Oh, let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. For in nothing, in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which to them is an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict with ye saw in me and now here to be in me. You know, if you're not walking at liberty, you won't be able to do that. If you haven't grown enough in your Christian life to trust God every step of the way, so no matter come what may, you're going to keep going on for Christ, you won't be able to do that. because we, we lack trust in God. And, you know, I'm not just preaching to the choir, I'm preaching to me. You know, you ever check yourself out? You ever check, what, what would I do in that situation? Paul only used to exercise his rights as a Roman citizen so it would keep him, not keep him from being able to preach the gospel. And when you come right down to it, brethren, we are not citizens of this world. It's theirs. You know, you're not going to change it. The only thing you're going to change this world is if the gospel had, it gets out. You can't legislate righteousness. I know a lot of people have tried. But until the country, this country especially, gets back to their roots and starts... Uh, humbling themselves and starts repenting of their sins, it's not going to change. It may slow it down a little bit. But, you know, the worse and worse it gets, that just means one thing. The Lord is coming back soon. The Lord is coming back real soon. What is that law of liberty? Uh, is to be able to walk with God in full trust and do what he says with, a, with a, uh, a cheerful heart, not worrying about what's going on around you. In James chapter 1, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, one of the, let's come to Romans, Romans chapter 8. One of these days, we're going to get the real, the true liberty. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> right now, we're... Uh, It says right here, uh, um, verse 16, Romans chapter 8, uh, well, verse 15. Um, For ye are not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit also beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs. Uh, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we, also, we may also glorify together. 
For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of hope who hath, uh, who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Only now, only, not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the, redu the adoption to wit, the redemption of of our body. One of these days, brethren, we're going to experience the greatest liberty on the face of the earth. But you know, we can help it along by our simple childlike trust and walk with the Lord. When we refuse to do that, like, like David wrote back here, we, we, have, we have problems. And he says right here in, in Psalm 119, he says right here, <clears throat> Verse 45, I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. When we think of the precepts of God, they're not grievous to us. Because we've trusted in him and we know. We may not understand everything in our lives, why it happens. But we know that the one who is in control of everything understands and he helps us go through it. Let's, uh, let's always let's dwell on that true fact of liberty. Brethren, we have liberty. If you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have all the liberty that you could have in this world and in the one to come. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this, <clears throat> the truth of thy word, Lord. What a precious knowledge to know that we do have true liberty. The world is looking for liberty, but they're all looking for in, in the wrong places. They don't have the peace and they don't have the joy that we who have trusted you do have. And I pray, Lord, if there be anyone here who's struggling with that, not really having the peace and the true liberty that they can experience, I pray, Lord, they just humble themselves and trust you. And, and they would see that you love them and that you have the best interest in them and want the best for them. We, we pray, Lord, you'd uh, bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.